Check the description for the following discount codes. Cockpit review today, and this one is from Outshine Gaming, who are based here in the UK. Now, some of you will notice a similarity between this and the GT Amiga Titan, the sort of tubular construction uh, of the frame itself. Uh, and the pedal tray is also very similar in shape and design, uh, which isn't the best. Uh, and the wheel deck, also very similar. Um, key differences here are the seat. This is more of your typical racing bucket seat that isn't adjustable um, on the upright. It does have sliders though. GT Amiga seats, of course, you can adjust the, the rake of the back. And this also has a integrated monitor stand that you can buy as an optional extra. Uh, whereas the GT Amiga Titan doesn't, and I know for a lot of people, that was a bit of a deal breaker because for a lot of us having a monitor, you know, fitted to the front of our rig right where we want it is quite important. Now I do have the optional monitor stand that's down here on the floor as well, along with the optional gear shifter mount. Now again, the GT Mega Titan comes with a shifter mount. Um, comparing prices, which is of course very important here, the basic rig here without the monitor mount, without the shifter mount, is a tenner more than the GT Amiga Titan. The Titan does of course include um, a seat with an adjustable rake and a shifter mount. So very, very close in pricing here, uh, sort of £450 for those of you that don't know the prices off the top of your head like I do. Best actually mention what it costs. So yeah, 450 notes, give or take, depending what options you want. Now, I'll, have a, I'll, I'll quickly show you a close up of the sort of tubular nature of this. For those of you, again, not familiar with the GT Amiga Titan, I like this sort of tubular design. I think it's very aesthetically pleasing, very front room friendly or wife friendly compared to something like the big aluminium profile ones. One thing I will say that I've noticed on this is the finish of the paint on these end pieces isn't very good. There's a lot of, I don't even know if it's going to show up on camera very well, but there's a lot of like small scratches and it's just uh, almost it's like it's been thrown around a, a factory somewhere. Again, I don't know how well it will show up on camera, but it's just not not the best. Now, the rest of it, like this, these main sort of chilly bits here, the, the finish of those is all fine. No issue with that. It just seems to be these two end pieces here. Not a deal breaker, but not the best. And, and you know, I like to point things out that I see as I come across them. Now, just like the GT Amiga Titan, the wheel deck, uh, pedal tray, sorry, is just thin two mil steel, you can see there, and there's nothing supporting it down the middle or across ways and nothing at this end here. So we are gonna see a fair bit of flex in that. And that was one of the biggest negatives to the GT Amiga Titan as well. Again, these are mid-range cockpits at 450 notes. So you can't expect the rigidity of like the GT Amiga Prime or a P1X or similar. But in some ways, I think this style of pedal tray is inferior even to what you might find on the GT Amiga R because they do have small bits of box section that run across the front most edge and the bottom edge, may even be one across the middle. So they won't flex as much as what this does. Now on the GT Amiga Titan, I don't actually use the, the pedal tray. I leave it off and bolt all my pedals when I'm testing stuff out to the plate underneath this. So on, on this example, it's this piece here, um, which I'll just give you a little close up of. It's, it would be this piece here. Now on the GT Amiga Titan, that is full width, which gives us plenty of scope for mounting pedals. This one you see here obviously is actually quite narrow compared to the pedal tray itself. And I don't think you're gonna be able to bolt any pedals directly to that. They need to be very narrow pedals. So that option isn't there for this one. And that's what I recommend people do with the GT Amiga Titan. And also for the Titan, for me, the pedal tray 
it's quite raised up and I didn't like it in that position anyway so I literally just didn't use it. Um, perhaps more of a formula position you might say with the pedals up high. Um, but yeah, that isn't really an option with this, so you will have to use that pedal tray that's there. I mean, we'll see what it's like in use, but it is going to flex. Um, maybe, I was about to say, if you're using like Logitech pedals, but even they have a very heavy brake pedal for entry-level pedals, so we are going to get some movement. But we'll see how it feels underfoot, and of course, it is something... Because it's repeatable, it will flex the same every time you press it. You can kind of get used to it. It's just not something we really want, you know, in our cockpits, uh, if we can help it. But, you know, we'll bear this all in mind with the overall price and how everything else is. Now, the so the seat, as I say, doesn't recline, but these are the mounting brackets for the seat. And they have integrated sliders here. So there will be this bar here that I will fit to the front and you'll be able to pull it and slide it backwards and forwards. So that's good. Um, that's kind of important really. So you can save a lot of time mucking about trying to bolt your seat in exactly the right place if you can at least slide it backwards and forwards. This is the wheel deck. Again, it's a very similar design to the GT Amiga Titan where you've got your angle adjustment here and here by slackening those off and the same on the other side that will allow you to move this independently from this and then this piece in the middle here will move independently of both of these so you kind of got that sort of adjustment if you if you will again these look to be pre-drilled for your usual um, thrustmaster logitech and am i seeing a fanatic bolt pattern on there i'm not actually seeing a fanatic bolt pattern on there because Fnatic bolt pattern is a three bolt pattern, unless we can use that one and then those two. But we'll see. I mean, I'm going to be testing this with the Fnatic CSL DD with the eight newton meter power supply. I feel that's a good piece of equipment to test a mid range cockpit on. You wouldn't, you know, when you buy something at this price point, it's not designed to be used with the higher, strong, higher end, stronger direct drive wheel bases, is it? You know, you want to buy something more like the Prime there or P1X or whatever. So we'll test it with something it's designed to be used for. This is the shift amount. Uh, looks like it just, I mean, there's instructions with the shift amount, but I'm guessing it just bolts on down the side, you know, like this, and you're gonna put your shifter on top. Again, that must be pre-drilled for, presumably, Thrustmaster, Logitech, and potentially Fnatic. Um, I'm sure it says on the website or in the instructions. But yeah, this plate is just held on with those two. There looks to be a couple of mil thick. Um, and it feels, because they've curved it over at the ends, and there's a reasonable portion of it actually sort of bolted down, it actually feels pretty pretty solid. So, um, you know, and tubular tubes of this size are inherently quite rigid. Um, we'll just see if we get any flex. I reckon it's going to be where it bolts down there. But we'll see. That's the shift amount. As I say, that comes with its own instructions and, you know, you've got your uh, little spanner here, Allen key, some clips and some cable ties for cable management. This, a similar, similar stuff comes with the main cockpit itself. So the tools are all there, another Allen key to be able to do that. And then we've got the monitor mat here on the floor as well, again with its own instructions. Bolts, cable ties and tools. Again, this is a tubular style monitor amount, so it's going to be in keeping with the design of the overall cockpit. And then we've got this piece and a couple of brackets here, sort of traditional VESA monitor amount type setup. So everything's there we need, and it all looks to be you know, okay for the price point. As I say, pedal tray, not the best, but it is what it is. Um, the seat itself, it's, I mean, we've got sort of a, I don't really know, ABS plastic maybe that's made out of with a small amount of padding. It's not massively padded. I think this felt crows up and off. Um, there's very little weight to this. It's not a good quality piece of cushioning by any means. And we've got some Velcro on the bottom there to hold it in place. Um, but, you know, it's, it's quite firm. 
I imagine it will be okay. Again, not high end, not low end. Slap bang in the middle, same for this back piece comes off here. And in fact, the, the upper section as well, may as well show you. Again, quite, quite thin, very light, not really much to that at all. <laughs> and this isn't designed for weight saving because we're not in an actual car. So it's just gonna be down to uh, production costs. And so then this will be, you can see the Velcro everywhere on this that holds it together. One thing I did notice, this little plastic, I don't know what to call it really, it's like a plastic bush or grommet, doesn't actually fit properly in the bottom here. Um, and you can, I don't know whether we'll see this on camera or not, but you can actually see the material coming through where they've cut a slit and push this through. Now, it's not really the end of the world because it's not something you're ever gonna see, but all the other ones, so at the side here, they are the correct depth, so there isn't any movement, and the same for these ones here. But that bottom one, as I say, can move in and out quite a way. So, yeah, just, you know, small, small details, little bits and bobs I've noticed whilst looking at it. But um, yeah, let's get it all together. I'll do a little walk around of it once it's fully assembled. Then I'll throw CSLDD on there and the matching pedals. And I might even dig out a Thrustmaster shifter, lob that on. Rob the missus' TV from the bedroom, <laughs> put that on the monitor stand and we'll give it all a little test. There we are, fully assembled. It's a really straightforward job putting it together. You could, you could do it without the instructions, to be honest, it was really that simple. And I think it looks quite nice with this sort of tubular setup. You see the monitor mount is attached there. You've got the shifter mount down to the left uh, wheel deck. Obviously the pedal tray and you know the main frame. And the seat, I think the whole thing, you know, looks, looks quite, Quite nice for a mid-range cockpit, but because it is a mid-range cockpit, we do have limitations and we'll get to those. But first of all, let's have a little goosey at the adjustments. The seat obviously does slide backwards and forward using that. You've then got angle adjustment um, and height adjustment. There's three bolt holes here, and then it will pivot up and down at the back here using these ones as well. So you've got a reasonable amount of of adjustment um, up and down and tilt wise. Obviously that can't be done on the fly like the sliders can, but it's better to have that than nothing. But what I will say is these bolts go into captive nuts in the back of the seat here. So be very careful how tight you do those up because they are those captive nuts are only stuck into this material here. And if you do them too tight, you'll just spin them right round. So just be a little careful of that should you buy one of these. The pedal tray can adjust backwards and forwards and it can tilt as well. The tilt is done using these pre-drilled holes here. There is three of those. So you've got like I think 30 degrees and 45 degrees. And then to move it forwards and backwards, where it's bolted down inside here, there is like a, a row of bolts that runs forward to back. So you can tilt it up uh, and slide it backwards and forwards to clear this um, bar at the end here, I mean, it looks like it should, no, it won't clear it as it is actually, so you would have to tilt it up a fraction if you want it to go further forward than where it is. The monitor stand obviously just bolts on there, as you can see, and that looks to be a pretty solid fixing method. I have no issue with that yet. Obviously, we'll put a TV on and see, and there's your, your stand, or vase amount, sorry. There, these bits here are what will bolt to the back of your television. Wheel deck, I mentioned the adjustment before. One thing I will say, this whole assembly here is only held on by these two bolts there. 
there's nothing coming in from the sides. This is not going into the main structure and nothing underneath. So I'm slightly concerned that this whole thing is going to flex up and down where those bolts are attached there. That is literally all that holds it in place. But we'll see once things are attached. Now, the shifter mount, um, we've got a bit of a problem with that. Where I suggested it may flex where it's attached by just these two bolts at the bottom, it's not gonna flex. There is, oh, how can I show this? Yeah, there is movement. You'll hear it. Now the reason there's that movement is because the clearances between the bolt holes that go through here and the clearance between this sort of semicircular section and this is just too great. No matter how tight you do these bolts up here, the clearance around the bolts in the holes that are drilled through allow it to move left and right and backwards and forwards. So that's just not a good, a good way of doing it at all. Um, the mount itself is probably going to be really solid, um, but the way it's attached to the rig, it's just not going to be good. As I say, it's the clearance around the bolts themselves, so it doesn't matter how tight you do them. You could do them so tight that you're crushing the tube, you still can't get rid of the gap around the bolts, the clearance that's there, you know, so that, that is a bit of a no-no, I'm afraid, from my point of view, uh, and something that could definitely be improved. Um, See, everything all went together without any trouble. No, really. The only thing I will say, actually, and this is not an exclusive to this cockpit, is sim racing manufacturers, or whoever actually produce a lot of their stuff, don't like to include washers for things. There are no washers for any of the bolts that assemble this. And that just means, in some instances, the head of the bolt, you know, like this, this head here, for example, on other areas, the hole that that is cinching down against often overlaps, you know, the head of the bolt, and it's, it's just not a good method. There isn't anything visible that I can show it to you on, because I think the worst one was under the seat. But it's like, if you just included some washers that go around, that would solve that issue quite nicely and stop you having to bite down into your material here. Um, the only thing that did come with washers is actually the the monitor mount, and that's because the monitor mount is not made by the same people as what make the cockpit, and I can tell that because it came with your standard issue bag of nuts and bolts and fixings that you get with all sorts of other, you know, TV mounts as well. So my guess is this is made by someone else. I mean, it is only a guess, but that's, that's why it's got washers with it and why the rest of the, the thing hasn't. But as I say, it's not exclusive to, uh, to outshine gaming, it's, you know, you see it with GT Amiga, you see it with Next Level Racing, you see it with all sorts, they just don't seem to include washers. Anyway, yeah, um, painless assembly, very, very straightforward. Shift amount is already a wobbler, so that's a bit of a shame. Um, and we'll see how the flex here holds up with being just held down by those two once we get some equipment on it and I test it properly, which is what I will do now. I've got all my sim racing equipment attached now. And unfortunately, I can already come to the decision that this is not a cockpit I can recommend um, for its price point. And when I reference price point, when you don't pay very much for something, you can't expect a lot. You know, if you were paying 200 pounds for a cockpit, for example, you would expect plenty of flex and wobble and the build quality to not be great. But when you're paying 450 pounds, which is what the base cockpit is, and then another 35 for the shifter, and then I think the monitor amount is maybe 90 quid, 100 pounds, something like that. You're getting over 500, 550 pounds. Um, you don't really want to have too much in the way of flex or wobble, you know, really. I mean, you can buy a GT Amiga Prime for about 550 quid without a seat. Obviously, that is without a seat. Um, but, you know, just to put it in comparison, the problem I've got here, I've got the CSLDD attached, and I was worried there might be flex here because of these two bolts that are attached, attaching the, the wheel deck there. There's not any flex there because there's so much flex somewhere else. And I'll get some close-ups of this in a minute, but we'll just, a couple of fingers here, look. 
and this is what we've got. It's really bad. And it looks like this whole tubular section here is wobbling. Now it doesn't surprise me too much because there are some plastic spaces down there where it bolts to. And of course plastic is quite squishy, shall we say, compared to metal. So, you know, I'm really not applying my two fingers on each side of my wheel and it's wobbling like mad. It's just no, it's just no good. Um, for the for the price point again, you know, I think this that this sort of flex is comparable to something like a Play C Challenge, you know, or um, or the Play C Evo that are a fraction of the price. You can imagine as you're trying to sim race, this all just wobbling around like that, and then your monitor is going to be doing the same in your face if that was attached as well. Um, I don't know whether you'll see the pedal tray too well here, but obviously that does flex pretty badly as well, even. Just using the accelerator, it flexes a little bit, and the clutch, which are not very heavy. This is the low cell brake pedal on here, but you know, again, you should be able to have a low cell brake pedal on a mid-range cockpit without too much flex. Um, everything went on okay, there was no issue with that, but it's just a combination of like the shift amount with the play in that, I'll get a close up of this again, and then all this wobble here, and then a flexi deck, it's just not a good buy for 450 pounds, unfortunately. Um, you know, the GT Amiga Titan is about the same price that comes with a shift amount that doesn't have integrated play in it. It has a more solid wheel deck. The uprights, this, this section on that is braced here. Um, if you go look at the GT Amiga website, which will stop this from moving. And of course, this doesn't have any of that brace in there, so it just wobbles like mad. Um, the pedal tray isn't much better on the GT Amiga Titan, which again is why, uh, yeah, Titan, which is why I recommend you know taking it off and using the actual base plate. But you can't you can't do that here because this is too narrow, so that can't be solved. And there's nothing we can do about this this upright wobble. And again, I'm not applying much force. If I was to actually apply some force it goes beyond ridiculous. So um, unfortunately, I just can't recommend you buy it. Uh, I mean, I, I've even been given a discount code, but even with the discount, it still you know, doesn't make it a good purchase when there's a better alternative out there. So unfortunately, this is a negative review and it's not something I can recommend. Um, I will have thrown up some close-ups of, of all this play throughout my waffling just now. But yeah, unfortunately, that, that's my conclusion. Um, uh, there's no easy way to fix any of it is the problem. You know, I don't mind if I could suggest to you lot, okay, you might just need to, you know, put a strap around here or just do an extra, throw an extra bolt or something in here or a cable tie around that. But there isn't, there's just too, you know, the shift amount, th th there's too much clearance around the bolts and the bolt holes where it fixes. So there's nothing you can do about that. This, there's no support for these, so they're just gonna wobble, unfortunately. And the, you know, the, the pedal tray, again, particularly is unsupported in the very middle, which is where your brake pedal is, and that's the pedal you press the hardest on. Of all the places to have support, it needs to be under there. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, a negative review, um, but it is what it is. Not everything in this world is great. So as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.